Give peace, O Lord, to those who wait for you, that your prophets may be found true. Hear the prayers of your servant and of your people, Israel. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the Lord be with you. Amen. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us, for you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Look upon us, O God, creator and ruler of all things, and that we may feel the working of your mercy. Grant that we may serve you with all our heart. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of Sirach. Wrath and anger are hateful things, yet the sinner hugs them tight. The vengeful will suffer the Lord's vengeance, for he remembers their sins in detail. Forgive your enemies, forgive your neighbors injustice, and when you pray, your own sins will be forgiven. Could anyone nourish anger against another and expect healing from the Lord? Could anyone refuse mercy to another like himself? Can he seek pardon for his own sins? If one who is but flesh cherishes wrath, who will forgive his sins? Remember your last days. Set enmity aside. Remember death and decay and cease from sin. Think of the commandments. Hate not your neighbor. Remember the Most High's covenant and overlook faults. The word of the Lord. The Lord is kind and merciful, slow to anger and rich in compassion. The Lord is kind and merciful, slow to anger and rich in compassion. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all my being, bless his holy name. 
Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. The Lord is kind and merciful, slow to anger and rich in compassion. He pardons all your iniquities, heals all your ills. He redeems your life from destruction, crowns you with kindness and compassion. The Lord is kind and merciful, slow to anger and rich in kindness. He will not always chide, nor does he keep his wrath forever. Not according to our sins does he deal with us, nor does he requit us according to our crimes. The Lord is kind and merciful, slow to anger and rich in compassion. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so surpassing is his kindness towards those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he put our transgressions from us. The Lord is kind and merciful, slow to anger and rich in kindness. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, None of us lives for oneself, and no one dies for oneself. For if we live, we live for the Lord. And if we die, we die for the Lord. So then, whenever we live or die, we are the Lord's. For this is why Christ died and came to life, that he might be Lord of both the dead and the living. The word of the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. I give you a new commandment, says the Lord. Love one another as I have loved you. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Peter approached Jesus and asked him, Lord, if my brother sins against me, how often must I forgive? As many as seven times? Jesus answered, I say to you, not seven times, but seventy-seven times. This is why the kingdom of heaven may be likened to a king who decided to settle accounts with his servants. When he began the accounting, a debtor was brought before him who owed him a huge amount. Since he had no way of paying it back, his master ordered him to be sold, along with his wife, his children, and all his property in payment of the debt. At that, the servant fell down, did him homage, and said, Be patient with me, and I will pay you back in full. Moved with compassion, the master of that servant let him go and forgave him the loan. But when that servant had left, he found one of his fellow servants who owed him a much smaller amount. He seized him and started to choke him, demanding, Pay back what you owe. Falling to his knees, his fellow servant begged him, Be patient with me, and I will pay you back. But he refused. Instead, he had the fellow servant put in prison until he paid back the debt. Now when his fellow servants saw what had happened, they were deeply disturbed and went to their master and reported the whole affair. His master summoned him and said to him, You wicked servant! I forgave you your entire debt because you begged me to. Should you not have had pity on your fellow servant, as I had pity on you? Then in anger his master handed him over to the torturers until he should pay back the whole debt. So will my heavenly Father do to you, unless each of you forgives your brother 
from your heart. The Gospel of the Lord. One of the first prayers that many of us probably learned as small children was the Our Father. Now we pray it every time we participate in the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass. We pray it every time we pray the Holy Rosary. But think, but like so many things that are repetitious within our life, we can recite this beautiful prayer taught to us by Christ in the gospel himself, not truly thinking about the words we pray and the relationships that they imply. Today's gospel from St. Matthew speaks about forgiveness and mercy. In the Our Father, God's forgiveness is contingent on us forgiving others as we pray. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. In the gospel parable, the servant has already been forgiven his debt by his master, which makes his hard and unforgiving heart toward one of his fellow servants who owed him a very smaller amount, even much more reprehensible. Life in the church demands that we forgive. We forgive one another, not only because it is the right thing to do, the compassionate thing to do, but because it is how God acts and expects us to act. As the last line of the gospel tells us, and I quote, so will my heavenly Father do to you unless each of you forgives his brother from the heart. End quote. The key to understanding this is that we are in relationship with God and with each other. By forgiving, we choose not to let any offense that has happened between us and someone else control how we continue to relate to another. By forgiving, we repair the damage to the relationship and restore dignity to both the forgiver, and the forgiven. That is why counting how many times we forgive, even to the point that St. Peter said in the Gospel, what he suggested at the beginning, seven times, misses the point. Think of how many times you yourself have gone to confession. Many times. You can't count. I hope it's more than unless you're Jesus or the Blessed Mother sitting in our presence, that it's more than you can count on your fingers and your toes if you take your shoes off. Think of every time we've gone to confession through our entire life, however many years we've been on the earth, and how many times God has forgiven us for great offenses, great offenses that break commandments, great offenses that are offenses against his love and his mercy. Just think how many times God has forgiven us. So Jesus' response to St. Peter is a way of reminding us that God forgives us countless times in the sacrament of reconciliation, and that this should be a motivation for forgiving each other equally countless times. Now that can be easier said than done, but with prayer and the grace that God offers us, it is possible. Our Heavenly Father has shown us the way to forgive one another from the heart, as Jesus very clearly spells out in the Gospel. Now in today's first reading from the book of Sirach in the Old Testament, Sirach is teaching exactly what Jesus is teaching in the Gospel parable. We cannot expect our sins to be forgiven unless we forgive another's injustices. We cannot expect healing of our anger if we harbor anger. We cannot receive pardon if we refuse to show mercy to another. 
grudges among family members in communities, in parishes, and in nations can be passed from one generation to the next. For example, maybe it's happened in your own families. You've experienced this yourself. Family feuds can go on for decades, during which time members of families do not speak to each other. And maybe somebody dies and they haven't made that act of reconciliation. The only thing that can break this cycle of sin and of hate and of fear and disunity is mercy and forgiveness from the heart. Jesus tells a striking parable in today's gospel about two instances of forgiveness of debts. One that is very lavishly given, the other miserably withheld. We can learn how to bring freshness to our praying of the Our Father from the parable in the gospel. The implication made in the parable is that God acts like that extravagant king, but maybe not so because God's forgiveness of our sins is always even beyond extravagant, even beyond any amount of measure. We do the measuring. God doesn't measure. As infinite as God's mercy and forgiveness is, to receive it without it, it, it is to receive uh, it is not without a substantial condition. We are to forgive another as we have been forgiven by God from the heart. Only forgiveness that comes from the heart will assist us in praying the Our Father with greater fervor. Our relationship with each other is described in terms of relationship with the Blessed Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Forgiveness and mercy is central to the message of the gospel and what Jesus preached because it is necessary in order for our relationship with God and each other to continually grow stronger and more grace-filled. Forgiving means that Jesus has a hold of us and enables us to act in a Christ-like manner every day. Forgiving means that the cost of reconciling petty hurts or even major ruptures pale in comparison to the immeasurable forgiveness of God that he offers us for our sins and confession. I'm going to share a quote with you from Pope Francis. It's rather lengthy, but I ask you to listen to it. These are Pope Francis's words, and I quote, One cannot live without seeking forgiveness. Or at least, one cannot live at peace, especially in the family. We wrong one another every day. We must take into account these mistakes due to our frailty and of our, our selfishness. However, what we are asked to do is to promptly heal the wounds that we cause, to immediately reweave the bonds that break within the family. If we wait too long, everything becomes more difficult. There is a simple secret to healing wounds and avoiding recriminations. It is this. Do not let the day end without apologizing, without making peace between husband and wife, between parents and children, between brothers and sisters. If we learn to apologize promptly, and to give each other mutual forgiveness, the wounds heal, the marriage grows stronger, and the family becomes an increasingly stronger home, which withstands the shocks of our smaller or greater misdeeds, but knew not and the day at war." End quote. Praise be Jesus Christ, now and forever.
I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate in the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. And I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Every day we pray that God will forgive us our sins as we are prepared to forgive our neighbor. In our prayers, let us seek the mercy of God who forgives. For Holy Mother Church, that we may be the model of forgiveness and mercy in the world that shouts out for vengeance and retribution, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those seeking forgiveness from those who they have, have wronged and for those who believe they cannot be forgiven, that they may know God's unconditional and eternal promise of mercy and forgiveness. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For catechists and all those who teach the faith to children, catechumens and learners of all ages, that their ministry may help both student and teacher grow in knowledge and passion for their faith. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the safety of those in the military and for police officers, firefighters, and all first responders, may they be protected through the intercession of St. Michael the Archangel. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the sick may be comforted and healed, and that those who have died may share the joys of heaven. We pray especially for Paul Stump, for whom this Mass is being offered, and for Megan, Megan Fosheska, daughter of John and Nancy Krem, who was buried this week, this past week. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for all the prayers we hold in the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Kind and merciful Father, slow to anger and rich in compassion, grant our prayers through Christ our Lord.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Look with favor on our supplications, O Lord, and in your kindness accept these, your servants' offerings, that what each has offered to the honor of your name may serve the salvation of all, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Amen. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you laid the foundations of the world and have arranged the changing of times and seasons. You formed man in your own image and set humanity over the whole world in all its wonder to rule in your name over all you have made and forever praise you in your mighty works through Christ our Lord. And so with all the angels we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, save us, Savior of the world. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Lawrence, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God,
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. You have laid down your precepts to be carefully kept. May my ways be firm in keeping your statutes.
Let us pray. May the working of this heavenly gift, O Lord, we pray, take possession of our minds and bodies so that its effects and not our own desires may always prevail in us. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying Lord by your life. Off our prayer in time of pandemic. Lord Jesus, you came to bring salvation to our world. You humbled yourself to accept death on a cross. Be with us as we confront the spread of the coronavirus with courage and hope. Be present to the sick and to those who accompany them in their suffering. Strengthen our medical professionals and caregivers. Comfort families who are separated from one another. Protect those who are at risk of the virus in their work. Grant wisdom to our civic officials and perseverance to scientists. Spare us from the ravages of this illness and console us in our uncertainty and fear. Unite us in hope, enlighten us in faith, and give us the grace as a church to love one another as you have loved us. Through the intercession of our Heavenly Mother Mary, we make this prayer as we place our trust in you. Amen. Have a blessed week, everybody.